Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. Several initiatives to ensure the comfort of COVID patients to be undertaken as new protocols come into effect. The Ministry of Equity holds a social crime prevention consultation. And Prime Minister the Honorable Philip J. Pierre lords the contribution of the Logos Hope to education and literacy. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre has announced amendments to the COVID-19 protocols as St. Lucia experiences an increase in COVID-19 cases. In an address to the nation Wednesday evening, Honorable Pierre noted that COVID-19 remains a threat to lives and livelihoods. The Prime Minister said, while we cannot eliminate the threat, we can mitigate the threat and avoid overwhelming the healthcare system and maintain a level of normalcy that allows for daily living. The current positivity rate of COVID infections is serious and requires an immediate and decisive response if we are to protect the lives and livelihoods of our citizens. We must act now, individually and collectively, to reverse the high incident of COVID infection. The policy of my government in handling the pandemic is to follow the science and the advice of the health experts and to encourage all citizens to do the same. This virus is too serious a threat to our lives and livelihoods to be left to the whims and fancies of uninformed personal opinions. We understand the discomfort and sometimes inconvenience that comes with following the recommended COVID protocols. However, discomfort and inconvenience are small prices to pay for the protection of our lives and livelihood. The amendment to the protocols will be in effect for three weeks. Workplaces must institute physical distancing and the blended approach where possible. The curfew has been revised. It is now 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. daily. All business operations and commercial activities must end by 8 p.m. daily. Social gatherings are to be restricted to immediate household and family limited to 10 persons. The church, limited to square footage for regular services. All daily or regular church and religious services are permitted in accordance with social distancing protocols. Special events. No allowance is given for gatherings and special events for the free period. Neither vaccinated or unvaccinated people are allowed to host or attend any social events including but not limited to parties, boat rides, receptions, etc. No loud music permits to be issued for a free week period. No formal submissions of requests to host social events will be, process will be processed for the free week period. Sporting activities, including gyms. All sports are allowed for the given time period, limited to field capacity and game structure. No spectators or crowding allowed at this time. Gyms are approved to operate in keeping with all necessary protocols and capacity limited by square footage. School operation for the new academic year will be assessed mid-August. Based on the transmission rate, a final decision on which schools will operate fully will be made. Protocols for the tourism sector include restrictions for local stay at COVID-approved properties where unvaccinated visitors are accommodated. Boat rides are prohibited. Alternate days for local and tourist service at restaurants, parks, etc. are to be maintained. The COVID-19 protocols come into effect Friday 13 August and end Tuesday 31 August 2021. Meantime, the government of St. Lucia will be embarking on several initiatives geared towards ensuring patient comfort at government isolation and quarantine facilities. The announcement was made by Prime Minister the Honorable Philip J. Pierre during his address on Wednesday. He noted that efforts will be focused on the welfare of patients. We also intend to make life more comfortable for our unfortunate brothers and sisters who are in, in isolation. We understand your discomfort and I intend to advise the Ministry of Health to engage patient welfare officers at the public isolation and quarantine facilities. These officers will assist the medical staff in ensuring that patients receive the supplies sent by relatives 
in a timely manner. We understand your discomfort and intend to make your isolation more tolerant. The Prime Minister added that utilities and equipment are also being considered in a move to improve the conditions and the facilities. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs will be engaging the relevant entities in that regard. The Ministry of Health will be holding consultations with service providers on improving the telecommunications and internet system at the respiratory hospital to enable more effective contact between patients, staff and families. We are also looking with a view to repair faulty medical equipment that impact on the delivery of health care at the respiratory That was Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre. Still with Health Matters, Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Moses Jabatiste, has been familiarizing himself with the Ministry of Health, holding discussions with various heads of department, including Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George. Honorable Jabati says the meetings have been in depth with intense focus on the management and mitigation of COVID-19. Newly appointed Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Musa Shabatist, reported that he had a very insightful day on the job. The minister held discussions with various key personnel within the ministry in an effort to garner information on its operations. Honorable Moses Jabatis noted that while it may seem daunting, he's very excited about the journey ahead. Well, uh, very exciting. I had discussions, the usual discussions with the permanent secretary, very pleasant. And he gave me an insight um, into the, the vastness of the Ministry of Health and Wellness and uh, Elderly Affairs. And we discussed the structure of the ministry and um, the, the, the key actors in the ministry. Um, so very exciting. And um, I look forward to, to the challenge, um, a, very, a very challenging um, pursuit, but, but clearly very important to our government as healthcare and this emerging health crisis, this health crisis um, is the number one priority of our government. The Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, highlighting the increase in the number of COVID-19 cases, explained that several consultation meetings have been held with the Chief Medical Officer. Efforts will be channeled towards getting a handle on St. Lucia's COVID-19 situation with the CMO's guidance. Discussions were also held with key stakeholders within the Ministry. Well, I have had several discussions with Dr. Sharon Belma george since Friday. Uh, especially on the on the COVID-19 situation and she has been very helpful with information and with guidance um, in and because you know with with her guidance and so on I, I I then proceed to to speak with the Prime Minister and to to advise the rest of the cabinet members of cabinet and so we have had several discussions I also held discussions with the team at the Victoria a respiratory hospital and again um, pretty insightful in terms of the operations and the challenges and we discussed ways and ways in which we can make things much better for them at the Victoria Respiratory Hospital. I held discussions with Dr. Francois at St. Jude and again we discussed the, the challenges and so on. Um, other staff members we've been exchanging pleasantries and um, trying to I'm trying to to learn my way around, while at the same time dealing head on with the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, we have had um, a, an increase in, in the number of cases and we have been dealing with that. Uh, we are just having a discussion with Dr. Sharon Belma George and her team um, to see what, what challenges lay ahead and how, as a government, we can un un unclog some some of the the, 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 the the choke pipes to ensure that we, we achieve our objectives. Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs Minister Honorable Moses Jabatis disclosed that his personal goals to be achieved during this time include ensuring St. Lucians have equitable and affordable access to healthcare services. Well, I want to, to be able to say that uh, my term as, as the Minister for Health wellness and elderly affairs um, led to, to a, a, a health system with, with better access 
better um, better care for for our people in St. Lucia, and also uh, a system where our people can can afford healthcare services, especially basic healthcare services. I want to be able to say that I was able to to galvanize our team. I was able to motivate our team, not only in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, but all across St. Lucia where you have individuals and organizations who are connected to the healthcare system. I was able to motivate them and galvanize them into action so that the, the clients, our people of St. Lucia, can get better health care. And I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm sure this will happen. I want to be able to say that, that we were able to, to complete our, our facilities and to make them available to our people. Um, of course, St. Jude Hospital being the number one healthcare facility. So all in all, I want to be able to say that our people at the end of our, our, our four, four years and 11 months to come, I'm, 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 I'm sure I'll be able to say that our, our people have access to better health care and they're able to access health care which is much more affordable and people can have confidence, a lot more confidence in our health care system. Minister Honorable Jabatist reported for his first day on the job on Monday, 9th August 2021. From the Government Information Service, Hilma Dimak reporting. Social transformation officers in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment have completed a sensitization program on crime and their role in helping fight the scourge. We get details of the social crime prevention consultation held in the north of the island in this report by Chevroy Marius. As part of its capacity building mandate, the Community Services Unit in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment has impact upon social crime prevention discussions for social transformation officers in the north of the island. The focus of the consultation was to sensitize social transformation officers on various crime prevention measures and solutions in the northern communities of the island. The one-day consultation was held on Tuesday at the Chase Gardens Human Resource Center. This workshop will assist the SGO tremendously in providing them with the information, skills and strategies required in terms of social crime prevention, um, a level of emotional intelligence, so that they could strengthen the preventative aspects of crime, being able to identify situations, whether it's at the domestic level, the community level, and more so to foster that relationship with the police and other agencies to focus on preventative aspects of crime. Consultation coordinator Ms. Danali Estava Sentange stated that due to the present increase in crime, working with the police before these criminal activities take place is extremely important. Social transformation, as the name suggests, is making changes within our society. Um, no region can function in a high crime situation. When you have situations where the community is threatened by crime or the fear of crime, it causes the citizenry, it causes the residents to react in ways that they wouldn't necessarily react in before. So working with the police in a preventative approach helps us to take care of some of the criminal elements before they become criminal elements. Social Transformation Officer for Grizzly, Mr. David Mohiz, stated that this initiative will help strengthen cooperation and trust between police and residents. Having such a meeting is going to encourage us now to help build back that trust, to see how we can address some of these social issues together, and ensuring that it's not a matter of showing authority, but showing that we are all part of a community. Generally, police and law enforcement are relied upon to present quick results. However, studies have shown that social crime prevention strategies have more long-term effects in reducing crime. What I have um, decided to do is to meet with our social transformation officers within the Northern Division. And the Northern Division is what I have responsibility for, and that's for stations from Denry up to Grosley and Grosley down to Canaries. Um, having previously been the person in charge um, of Grosley, Ronnie, and Babono, I worked closely with Mr. Moyes, who was, who was the STO for that area. And I realized that there was so much that we were able to achieve, being able to network, being able to help form our neighborhood watch groups, um, looking at various issues in the society. Because people see police as 
come in to arrest you with the guns and you know they 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 just rough and but at the end of the day we need to embrace that side of policing which is community policing once we are able to you know um bridge that gap there is so much that we are able to achieve crime prevention must be interactive and provide participants with an overview of best practices for crime reduction reporting from the ministry of equity social justice and empowerment i am chevrai marius the world's floating bookstore, The Logos Hope, is back in St. Lucia and has been lauded by Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, for contributing to literacy on Ireland. Hermody Mack has that story. The Logos Hope, birthed in Port Castries, on 10th August 2021, welcomed its first set of visitors. The official opening ceremony saw the attendance of Prime Minister, St. Lucia, Honorable Philip J. Pierre. The Logos Hope, birthed in Port Castries, on 10th August 2021, welcomed its first set of visitors. The official opening ceremony saw the attendance of Prime Minister St. Lucia, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Governor General Emeritus, Dame Paulette Louisi, and representatives of other key agencies. Honorable Philip J. Pierre, highlighting the contribution of the Logos Hope to education and literacy in small island developing states, welcomed the Logos to St. Lucia. We cannot and we must not allow books to become passy. It is for this reason that Logos is truly bringing hope to our small island developing states. And you have joined us at an opportune time when children are on vacation and should be encouraged to spend more of their time reading. And when many of our people are on the, on the conditions of of the pandemic they have to stay home so we hope that they can read to exercise to spend some time reading and gaining knowledge and get a little less bored being having to stay home because of the pandemic i also know that the logos is more than just a bookstore it's about bringing the world alive by good deeds as well we welcome your acts of charity and we hope you enjoy our country and its hospitality the vessel is home to 250 volunteers from over 50 nations, each joining this floating community to bring knowledge, help and hope to the people of the world. The Logos Hope comprises of the Book Fair, Journey of Life Tour and Cafe. Director of the Logos Hope, Captain Tom Dyer, expressed his elation to be in St. Lucia once again. We've always sensed that love of the people of St. Lucia, I can tell you. I can tell you that relationships and friendships are going to be made in this port. We're here until the 25th. I guarantee you there are going to be crew members that are going to make friends with St. Lucians, and they'll go on for years and years. Kim and I made friends many years with a couple that just live right around the coast. They're in their 80s right now. We went to visit them already since we've been here. Long-time friendships. And so as we, as we open the ship, as we soon will go down with you, Prime Minister, and Governor General, and cut that ribbon and as we leave the nation. We are going to be enriched, and we're going we're gonna to enjoy your generous hospitality as we share knowledge, help, and hope. While in St. Lucia, volunteers from the Logos Hope will be collaborating with charitable agencies to lend support to the needy. The initiatives to be undertaken include a feeding program in collaboration with the Salvation Army and a mentorship program at the Boys Training Center. The Logos Hope is accepting St. Lucian volunteers to join their diverse crew during their stay. Amy Joyley is a member of the advanced preparation team of the Logos Hope. Normally we have five departments, book fair, engine, deck, uh, catering, and angels. So these different departments need people to help. So the volunteer comes and the leaders designate them to help in a specific department. So we have a huge community in, in each department, so they connect with them. I don't know about the meals, it's like a, a restriction for now because uh, depends on if they are uh, vaccinated or unvaccinated. If they are not vaccinated, they cannot come to the dining room, but if they are, they share with uh, or the meals with us as well in the same place that we eat. The Logos Hope is open to the... This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us.
Caribbean Ties, a connected people then and now. A unique exhibition that presents the diversity and complexity in the Caribbean before the arrival of the Europeans. August 1st to the 31st at the 100-year-old Anglican Annex. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be part of the past, still present today, through stunning exhibits accompanied by live cultural street entertainment. Save the dates, August 1st to the 31st. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur Madame, le département qui est responsable pour les formations à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, ensemble avec la télévision nationale pays NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Creole. Pour cette année, Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre cette ci on nous a Philippe J. Pierre, adressé nation en mec du souhait concernant des marches pour essayer de contrôler des gouets qui maladie corona qui a augmenté en cette ci présentement. Le premier ministre a tenu une discussion et puis il a dit avant ça. Le premier ministre Pierre dit que la maladie est trop dangereuse pour la JI en bas de l'opinion de ceux qui ont dit que ça a été fait. Après cette décision que le premier ministre Pierre dit, le gouvernement Japon, c'est pour tirer sans des commandes pour adresser la maladie corona en bas de l'opinion ministre et plutôt placer en bas de la conduite de l'opinion professionnelle de santé qui a trop de meilleures positions pour agir et puis situation ça là. Le Premier ministre Pierre a annoncé aussi que les individus qui ont trouvé condamnés pour désobéir aux règles de conduite du corona, qui ont trouvé gracié, ça veut dire que tous ces prêtres ont été Le Premier ministre a dit que ça c'est l'air pour encourager les peuples pour prendre précaution, exprimer ces règles et ne pas punir et forcer. Les gens qui sont en quarantaine et en isolation ont été fait pour se trouver à trouver à l'air. Toute nécessité que la famille qui a voué par le Premier ministre Pierre a annoncé aussi le ministère de la Santé qui a tenu une discussion et puis les organisations de télécommunication ont été pour procurer un meilleur service, particulièrement pour Internet en l'hôpital Victoria, pour faciliter un meilleur contact entre ces gens qui sont malades et puis la famille avec les travailleurs en l'hôpital. Pour les mettre restaurants et hôtels, depuis le mot corona a commencé à prendre en descendant, tous ces services là qui sont virés en opération encore normalement. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que les gens considéré ce qui a fait un pays sévère sans la grenade, un tic avec l'autre pays qui a concerné la protestation pour la, pour la vaccine, c'est aussi pas une pièce attention pour forcer les personnes pour prendre la vaccine, mais qui a encouragé pour considérer l'importance pour sa tête pour prendre dose de la vaccine. Commencez les 13 pour les 31 août, la caïne pour une distance sociale en place de travail, et que Fioua a commencé à 9h soir, mais tout le business n'est pas fermé au point de 8h soir, et ça a été fait les 4h le bon matin. La famille n'a pas plus que 10 personnes pour sembler ensemble à des pièces d'activité sociale. Pièces de musique fort pas supposé jouer en public et que ça c'est pour trois semaines pour venir. Tout service de l'église qui suit ces règles là qui j'ai en place pour eux, de par ce qu'on de l'église là. Pièces d'activité sociale, pas ni pour faire pour l'autre trois semaines là. Pour activité sport, la pas ni pour une pièce gagnée qu'à combler. Toute institution d'éducation qui continue en même façon qu'on est déjà établi avec l'école qui vit au opérer de par ce assessement en mettant moi là où. Si malade est après un décédent, il peut prendre mon temps, ça va décider que je vais ouvrir ouvert l'école. Parmi les autres règles, c'est la panique permission pour boat ride et l'autre activité comme ça. Le Premier ministre Pierre fait un appel pour tout le monde de considérer la dose de la vaccine pour la protection nationale, la famille et eux même Chef officier des affaires nourriture à département de santé, Lisa Hunt, qui avait dit que le public a concerné la qualité de l'habitude qui n'a ni de l'évine pour ça qu'il a mangé. Lisa Hunt, si vous êtes un qui n'a pas de l'habitude qu'il a mangé un peu de graisse, servi en l'eau, sel, sec, et sink, ça veut dire sel, et sink, ça a mis en risque pour trouver une maladie qui a pris cher, puis ça a aussi un problème de cher. Le chef officier des affaires nourritières a dit aussi, si vous êtes un qui a pris cher, 
yo ka mete ko yo plus en risque pour santé yo so nou ka um, encourager moun dat yo manger bon qualité manger ko fruit um régime et puis um pa manger manger ki ni trop graisse pa fruit manger man, ou sa manger en um, noir c'est ma qualité manger ça avec bois en chai glo so ka manger bien ou ka ni ou ka ni bon santé c'est pour ça nous ca encourager moun pour manger bien pour empêcher yo hen ncd mamzel hunt aussi remarqué que les les parents ni pour yo ni pour constituer ça c'est les parents situation ça là très sérieux aussi parce que yo ca quoi yo ça bay les enfants yo manger n'importe manger et bien souvent c'est manger ça là ni trop graisse et bien celle et ça ca travail à dedans ces petits enfants et ca commencer affecter yo depuis un petit test Et c'est pour ça nous encourager mon pour um, bailler les choses, bon manger, pas bailler trop de choses qui sont dans le um, package. Bailler les choses qui sont um, naturelles, pas bailler trop de manger fruits, pas bailler trop de um, choses qui sont si cadrées avec ces choses. Donc so, il est important pour ces mamans de commencer à manger bien depuis les petits. Et là, ils sont venus plus grands, ils ont fait plus bon, um, you know, by, you can, you can, Vous connaissez ces qui sont pour vous. Et vous pouvez choisir ce qui est plus bon. Le Conseil national de jeunesse, c'est ici, NYC. Je félicite le Premier ministre honorable Philippe Jepier pour la victoire en élection 2021 et pour présenter un cabinet de ministres gouvernement nouveau. Le Conseil de jeunesse a aussi félicité tous ces membres du Parlement. Hot tout ces 17 paresse là qui j'ai baissé le service à gouvernement. Qu'on se la félicité en particulier les plus jeunes candidats qui devaient succès et qui ont gardé la situation sur la coyon l'occasion pour encourager plus jeunes pour travailler en service public PIA. Qu'on se la félicité honorable Dr. Ernest Heller qui c'était pré- premier président branche qu'on se la qui est ça pour les étudiants en, en Haïtia pour se trouver apprêtement comme ministre des Affaires touristiques pour deuxième terme. Li, Quand un représentatif du Parlement pour Paris Sud Castri, Conseil de la Diocie, il va complémenter tout le membre du gouvernement, présentement, et c'est c'était membre du Conseil de la, particulièrement, il était membre du Conseil de la, à ces Conseils de jeunesse à ta base. À part ces candidats qui trouvaient succès, c'est honorable Jeremiah Norbert, pour ça c'est tellement brave. Et pour le bout, c'est tellement raide, malgré la situation qui se fait malheureusement. Quand cette jeunesse, c'est ici, complémenter le gouvernement pour bailler le soulagement pour les parents, pas payer, puis faciliter à l'école et qu'à conseiller le gouvernement aussi pour embrasser la réformation de l'éducation, pour assister les étudiants qui pas payer pour continuer l'éducation à plus haut degré, l'université a fait comme ça, l'organisation aussi, complémenter le travail en ligne en ligne de éducation vocation pour certifier jeunesse en façon technique pour trouver travail concept là car pour trouver travail concept là car quoi ça caille pour trouver une bonne occasion pour jeunesse qui perd des chances là à l'école pour trouver une deuxième chance pour continuer éducation yo pour aider la famille avec yo même concept la jeunesse c'est aussi aussi qu'il y a ce gouvernement pour considérer sécurité et bonne protection pour les jeunesse en considération pèse qui danger maladie corona pour la vie sociale et économique yo en pays yo ka conseiller pour l'année yon fort assessment pour établir web pour aider réduire toutes sortes de manifestations de violence pauvreté abusement de drogue les jeunes filles qui ka trouver yo enceinte jeunesse qui ka quitter l'école avant l'air et l'autre mauvais problème yo l'autre problème qui très critique c'est des gros jeunes qui pas ni un travail pour faire alors les jeunes qui quoi qui établissement yon économie pour les jeunes qui renforcer économie pays et qui apporter plus l'occasion pour la travail pour les jeunes cette ici qui ni autant talent quand c'est la quoi qui ces discussions qui ont déjà ni avant qui continuer et puis premier ministre là et aussi ministre des affaires jeunesse export et économie jeunesse pour faire bon plan pour cette année qui va venir Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle amie, c'est madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie invitation pour vous donner un conseil de conserver la vie. Nous avons présenté une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez présenté Je vous remercie pour vous donner un conseil de conserver la vie. Merci à Pearl Primus. 
That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.